Hello and welcome to Flutterflow Academy. Today we will have a look at the basics of the Firestore database as you can already read it here on my screen. In this video I will give you a brief overview of how a Firestore database works and what you should keep in mind whenever you create a database for your app. This video might be a bit more technical than our usual tutorials, but don't worry, it's worth it. After you understand Firestore databases, you will have made a huge, huge step towards becoming a better no-code and Flutterflow developer. This video is part of our Firestore series. If you want to learn more about Firestore, we definitely recommend to watch our other videos about it and to subscribe to this channel. But now, Let's take a big sip of our coffee and get started. So you probably already know what a database is. To put it short, it's a place where your app's data is stored. The Firestore database is a database that is part of Google's Firebase. It's a flexible, scalable, no SQL cloud database and uses real-time listeners to keep the data in sync. Using Firestore for your app has a ton of upsides. It's flexible, it works in real time, it allows your user to use the app even when he's offline and you can use it in larger projects. So it's scalable, it's, it's just amazing. You can do nothing wrong using the Firestore database for your app. If you're not familiar with databases, you probably wonder what this NoSQL is that I just mentioned. So what a NoSQL database is. And well, a NoSQL database is a schema-less database. Okay, that probably didn't help at all. Schema-less means that the data is not stored in the classic table format. So you actually don't have any restrictions on how you store your data. The Firestore database uses so-called collections and a document model to store the data. That means that you have different collections. Let's say, one of your collections is called users. This collection then consists of different documents. To stick with our example, in our users collection, we can find the documents user1, user2, and user3. Each document has a unique name in their collection and contains fields. Fields contain the document's data in a so-called key value pair. For user1, this could be name, max, age, 20, and nationality German. The key is always the kind of category. So name is the key to the value max, age is the key to the value 20, and nationality is the key to the value German. An important thing to know about this is that each document can contain different fields. For example, inside of user one for max, I could also include the email and the birth date. Now that I have included email and birth date inside of user one, can you already guess which would be the key and which would be the value in these two new fields? And you probably guess it right. The email and the birth date are our keys and max at gmail.com and Christmas of 1990 are our values. Okay, great. I hope now that you have at least an idea how the Firestore database works. Let's just repeat it one more time. In a Firestore database, you don't have classic tables. You have so-called collections, and in each of these collections are documents. And each of these documents can have multiple individual fields that are always in the format of a key value pair. If you don't understand it now 100%, just rewatch this video a little bit or check out the other parts of our Firestore series. You will grow on the concept along the way. One thing that you should always keep in mind when you work with user data is the security. To learn more about it, check out our video on how you can secure the data using the Firestore rules. But for now, that's it. Thank you for watching and check out our next video of this series to learn how to create collections so that you can really get started with your project. Have a nice day and happy flutter flowing.